So this is the first lesson in the series of videos for digital solutions in Unit 1. So the goal of this lesson is for you to understand the constituents of a digital problem. And constituents just means the bits and pieces what make up a digital problem. Because even though in this subject we're on about digital solutions, in order to come with a solution you really need to understand the problem and understand what a problem is made up of, and the different things you need to be able to do in order to successfully fix that problem. Now, why are we doing this? Because we want to work out what quality the problem has. Because in every assignment and every task that we do in this subject, we really need to understand that problem. How are you going to know you're successful? Well, if you're really successful, you'll be able to provide a detailed description about the different things that make up a problem. If you can only provide a reasonable description, then you're on track, but you're not fully there yet. And if you can only say minimal things, then you should go back and you should revise things at the end to get yourself up to a higher level of understanding. So we should kick off. So digital problems need digital solutions. This is Molly Burke. Molly was born on February 8 in 1994, and at age 4 she was diagnosed with retinitis pigmentosa. It's a condition which causes loss of vision, and by the age of 14 she had lost most of her sight. So she was legally and is still legally blind. But the question is, as a legally blind person, how does she interact with and use technology? What are your thoughts? Just take a moment and think, what type of technology do you use? And how could someone like Molly use those same pieces of equipment? How could she use a phone? How could she use a computer? How could she use a tablet? How could she use a television? How could she use any of those bits of technology without being able to see? So now that you've collected some thoughts of your own, let's see what Molly herself has to say. So Molly is quite well known actually. Uh, Molly runs a YouTube channel and it's quite a successful YouTube channel. It has more than 2 million subscribers and more than 176 million views. So the question is, how does someone who's visually impaired produce content for YouTube? And how does she go about making it available to other people? I mean, it's quite an involved process to create content and put it on YouTube. I mean, there's lots and lots of different steps. But the first phase is you're just going to do a preparation. You've got to decide what the content is. And you actually have to identify it, access some resources, or do some research in order to generate a plan or some basic materials. And that's before you even begin filming. And then you've got filming. Someone has to record, has to work out if the takes or the shots are good, they have to frame it, they have to set up and test the audio and make sure the levels are done. How can these things be achieved if someone is visually impaired? And then you have the editing. How are you going to know when to edit? How are you going to know where to cut things and put things together? Then after that, you've got to, it's got to be uploaded. It's got to be made accessible. Someone has to log into YouTube, select the right account, hit the right buttons, find the right place, and know that it's actually uploaded so it can be published. And then what about viewing the statistics or the feedback and responding to what people say? I mean, all of these things, they're all involved in producing videos for YouTube. Okay, so... Perhaps Molly does have some assistance from other people, but somewhere along the way, she's in charge. She's making the decisions and approving things. How how does that happen? How is she going to achieve this? This is these are these are problems. Problems that actually need some type of solution. And as we've seen earlier, Molly is quite good with technology, so perhaps she needs some type of digital solution to help her with some of these particular steps. 
So digital problems uh, are those problems that they're solvable using information and communication technologies. They're, they're problems that can be solved using computers and iPhones and robots and anything that involves technology. So digital solutions, what we're interested in to these problems, can be use a wide variety of developed and developing contexts such as web applications, mobile applications, interactive media and intelligent systems. Our solutions that we're going to create in this course, we're mainly going to focus on web applications. But we may also dip into interactive media and occasionally think about mobile systems or mobile applications. So they're the type of solutions that we're going to develop for the problems that we encounter as we move through this course. So in summary, digital problems are open-ended. So that means that they've, they've got multiple solutions and multiple ways of getting to those solutions. When we come up with problems or are faced with issues, most of the time, there's actually not one correct answer. It's not like maths, where it's right or wrong. It's not kind of like English where you can write something that's kind of always in the same vein. I know I need to write an essay about Macbeth. And so the content is already there. Our solutions are open-ended. Sometimes you're just going to be given the problem with not much direction in how to solve it. So that means you can go pretty much anywhere you want as long as you can justify that your solution is on the right track. Additionally, our problems, they relate to human needs or wants or opportunities that require the new or reimagined solution. There's no point coming up with a solution or some type of system if it doesn't actually do something for someone. So we're in the business of understanding people. What do people need? What do people want? And we know what people need or people want. That presents us with the opportunity to create a product to service their need. So problems can be solved through the use of technology via different things called algorithms. So we're going to investigate algorithms. Now, it's not a scary word, algorithm. It's a very useful word. It's a tool. It's just a procedure that we'll investigate later on in the course about how you can develop a series of steps to solve a problem. We, we are going to do some programming. The languages we're going to use are JavaScript, and we're also going to use HTML and CSS. They're very powerful languages. They can do a lot of things, and they're not difficult to learn. In fact, you'll be able to learn the basics of coding in about two weeks when we get to it. Now, the coding and programming is actually a skill. And like any other skill, the only way to get better is to practice it. So once you've learned the basics, we will have problems to deal with and we'll try and solve those problems and come up with solutions to those problems. And through applying our skills, that's how we will improve. We're going to create user interfaces. Now the user interface is what you see when you go to a web page or use a mobile application. It's what you see on the screen. It's the buttons, the text, the pictures, the layout. And we're going to use data to create meaningful and useful information. So in Unit 1, which we're doing now in Term 1 and also in Term 2, doesn't really deal with data that much. But Unit 2 is very data-centric. In Unit 2, we're going to learn a programming language called SQL. We're going to learn how to use databases, and then eventually we're going to integrate them into our web applications. So we can build systems that store data and use information and data to provide useful solutions to people. So that's just a general overview of where we're going and what digital problems are and some of the ways that, and some of the components that you could use to solve them.